Come on, aren't you glad you know Jesus is God alone, sitting up on the throne. Hallelujah, high and lifted up. Praise the Lord. The song says, before time began, you are God alone. Brother Lacey, there would be no time if it wasn't for God. It is God that set time into motion. People wonder where he came from. I'm going to tell you something. Without God, there is nothing. Hallelujah. He is God and God alone tonight. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Does anybody have a special need that you'd like for us to pray about besides what's rolling on the screen right now? We know there's some that have been out and we know we are still praying for them. You can see Sister Kim and I still have this special request before the church. We'd like for you to help us pray about Sister Linda there, Sister Foster, so many other needs tonight. Look around, you see several not here. Let's remember uh, Greg and Jacqueline as they are traveling in Virginia right now, that God keep his hand up on them. You see so many names up there. Let's not forget, just because they're up there and we don't say their name all the time, they still stand in need of prayer. So Dr. Haven's name, Judy Brown. When Sister Judy stands much in need of prayer. We need to remember her tonight. Sister Helen Let's continue to pray for Sister Brock. Sister Donna, see your hand back there. Yes. Yes, amen. Let's remember all this that's getting ready to take place. Sister Kayla. Yes, and they went and had the test done, and the test came back negative, but whatever it is has got a hold of him. And there's been some stomach flu going around, too, so we need to remember that as well. There's been several, a couple here at the church and a few outside of the church that I know of that's been battling that, so let's remember them. Let's continue to pray for Sister Connie. We haven't seen her for a while because of the issue with the grandbaby, and let's remember her. She said she's watching, so praise the Lord, Sister Connie, and pray that you're able to watch tonight. Any other needs? Amen. If not, let's take all unspoken requests then by uplifting of the hand. We know that God sees and knows every need. Isn't that right? And not only sees them, but he's able. Not only able, but we know he will move upon each need. Sister Angie, did I miss your hand? Sorry. I didn't see it. Yeah, they're going to be traveling on vacation. So let's pray God has his hand up on them as they are out and about let's pray they just have a great family time. Come back, rejuvenated and recharged in the Holy Ghost as well. All right, how many knows God's a healer tonight? We know that God will move up on these knees. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now in faith believing. Sister Blanche, lead us to the throne of grace, sister. Precious Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, Lord, right now. God, we are calling upon you. Lord, but we know that you are the healer of our body and the lover of our soul. Lord, able to come down to move up on every need and every situation, every circumstance, God. We know, Lord, that your hand is in each thing. Lord, we know, Lord, that you look down, you see, Lord, the end from the beginning. Lord, yes, God, yes, God. We know, Lord, that you are the first and the last and able to do all things, Lord, that you are the one that set this world into motion. Lord, the one that formed us out of the dust of the earth and breathed into us, knows us from our mother's womb, God. Lord, we know that you see our needs tonight as we're calling out. Lord, we're calling out for you to just continue to move, Lord, and have your way. Lord, this sickness running through the land, God, all these needs, Lord, we pray that you would just move in a mighty way. Move, God, and let your will be done. Lord, those, God, dealing with death, Lord, we pray that you would comfort them and keep them. Those on the job tonight, Lord, we pray your hedge of protection about them, Lord. Oh, God, and keep them stirred up. Keep them on fire. The nursing home, Lord, the hospitals, Lord, those incarcerated, oh, I pray, souls to be saved, souls to be added to the kingdom. This neighborhood, God, Lord, as they go about their day, let them see and know, Lord, there's a place of salvation for them to run to. Lord, that there's a people that loves them because there's a God that loves them. Lord, and let us see souls saved before it's too late. Lord, add to the kingdom. Add to the kingdom. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, and let us do our part. Let us, God, be beneficial to the work. Lord, to the work of God. Oh, yes, Lord, how we love you. How we thank you and how we praise you. Lord, oh, yes, God, yes, God. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise tonight. Oh, the lovely name of Jesus. 
Yes, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we said it a while ago. Can we say it again? Jesus. Uh, somebody say it like you're loving. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, there's no other name like that precious, lovely name of Jesus. You can be seated tonight if you wish. Several things coming up, several things that are going on. Well, first of all, I want to say how thankful we are that you are here tonight. Amen. Able to come out, be with us in this midweek service. And all the young people, including the Youth Alive group, will be going next door here in just a little bit. Don't forget, this Saturday, 11 o'clock, or on the 11th at 1 o'clock, uh, Jonathan Masters Open House, Graduation Open House next door, 1 o'clock this Saturday, July the 11th. So don't forget about that. Also, there will be an open house, a welcome, if you will, to the community. How many is glad the Amos family has made this their family as well? Praise the Lord. So we want to make sure that we welcome them into the community. So from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock, sometime in there, go over and celebrate with them as they're going to have an open house at their home. You can see them for more details. Or just tell us, Sister, Brother Amos, what's the address? 709 West Park Avenue. So over real close to the high school, just down the street from the high school. Everybody go over and let's just welcome them officially to the community. I think they feel pretty welcome already, but we're glad that they want to have an open house and invite everybody from the church over to be part of that. So everybody go over. Let's be respectful. And let's go over and show them that we love them, that we care about them, and just... Uh, be at home, because I think that's what they want us to be, because I hope that's how they feel here and around us, just right at home, and we're thankful that we can celebrate with them. All right, don't forget also Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, Sunday school, 5.30 prayer, Sunday night, church to follow, we're looking forward to what God has in store. Sister Donna said a few moments ago, we have vacation Bible school coming up, there will be a work day on the 17th and 18th, preparing for vacation Bible school. We'll have Sunday school on the 19th, then we're going to have a fundraiser uh, that afternoon, right after Sunday school, a lunch fundraiser for the work in the Philippines. Brother and Sister Leite and Brother Jaira there, they're going to be making us some shish kebabs and pork adobo and rice, I think, and we're just going to have a great time, and we are going to pay, so brother, don't even act like you're going to volunteer and Nothing like that. We're going to pay so that we can raise money for the Philippines. We love the Philippines, don't we, folks? And love what God is doing over there. Hallelujah. And we want to be able to continue to support them, to help them as well. So that will be on the 19th. And right after that fundraiser, right after we get done filling our bellies, we'll just have another service, whether it's outside or in here. And there will be no 630 service on the 19th. So you might make that change on your calendar. Vacation Bible School is coming up on the 20th through the 24th, 6 to 8 o'clock. Those that are working, try to be here as close to 5.30 each night as you can. Also, the 25th, Backpack Bash. Everybody come out to the back, even if you're only here for a few minutes to see what is happening and what is going on that day. It is a great day and a great time, and we're just so thankful. Thank you once again for your giving. It has allowed us to continue to help the community uh, we just got done ordering just about all the rest of the supplies that we hope to need. We might need more. You never can tell. And if we do, we'll run out and get some more. But we ordered those this week, and they're going to be delivered, Lord willing, tomorrow. So we're looking forward to having all the supplies ready for the young people to come in and be a part. Now, again, if anybody asks you, because we get this question quite a bit, if any of your neighbor kids or any of your grandkids or your kids or anybody or anybody that's watching here tonight, if... You, we, you do not have to show any kind of proof that you are in need. It's not about a need thing. It's about a community outreach in uh, our church, reaching into our community. We say it all the time. It's not a handout. It's a reach out. And we want them to know that there's people. I don't want them to see brick buildings. I want them to see our faces, that when they go by these buildings, I want them to know there's a family in there that's praying for me. There's a family in there that loves me. Maybe it was over a hot dog or a bag of popcorn or a snow cone or giving them a backpack but somebody in there showed me love. And I remember that face because I see them at Walmart or I see them at the pizza joint or I see them at McDonald's or wherever it is. And they'll call you out. So make sure that we show them. How many knows we can show them the love of God more than just on Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. But we better show it to them all the time. And Sister Donna, I called it this Sunday, I think during adult class, we're going to have Vacation Bible School Revival that week. 
We'll call it revival. That way, everybody knows you're welcome to come out. We have uh, uh, Brother Jones, I think, again, are you doing the Bible lesson again this year with a little bit of help? But Brother Jones will be doing the Bible lesson each night in here. So if you just want to come in and sit in the air condition and listen to the Bible lesson, you might go out and see what Brother Mike and all the crazy kids are doing in science lab. They might blow something up. You never can tell what's going to happen out there. Right, Sister Kimmy? Now, you're getting married. Make sure you get married with all your digits. So don't blow anything All right, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, so don't forget, a lot of things coming up, a lot of things that are going on, uh, more than that, that is happening. Mark this down, though. I want to make this announcement, make sure that we're all aware of it. September, I know that sounds like a long way away. There's a wedding in September. There's all kinds of things in September. The 26th is the wedding, right? 2.30, is that the right time? One, don't show up at 2.30, it'll be over. Might show up for the party, I don't know. One o'clock on the 26th will be the wedding, and it's in Brown County. We're at in Brown County. The old barn in Brown County, one o'clock on the 26th. But on the 19th, and that's what I want you to make yourself aware of as well, the 19th, the week before that, we are going to have our second annual coat drive, our community coat drive, We're partnering with Steak and Shake once again. We appreciate those folks up there for partnering with us once again. They're excited about it. They're looking forward to it, and we are as well. So, Lord willing, weather permitting, we'll be taking our tent, setting them up out in front of the Steak and Shake again. Brother Caleb, you still got that outfit? You better find it. All right, because last year you should have seen it. If you want to see it, I got it on video. We can put it on the big screen again. I still got it. All right, but on the 19th of September, Lord willing, or Lord willing, uh, we won't have the weather that we had last year, right? And that was a little cold and a little wet. So we pray the weather is just a little bit better in September than it was in November. And uh, we're going to just have a great time that day. So be marking that down. If you see coats on sale, you see hats and gloves on sale. I know it's a little warm for that right now, but that sometimes that's when last year's model goes on sale. Well, we don't care if it's last year's hats and gloves. We'll buy them anyway. So if you see that or somebody's online looking at things online and you see a place that we can buy in bulk, let us know that as well. All right, September 19th. Mark that down so we don't forget about it. A lot of things happening between now and then. The rapture could come any moment. I don't remember. Whatever time it was last year. I think it was 10, was it 10 to 2 last year. Somewhere in there, we'll go with that. Look it up, Sister Clark, and we'll let you know here in a second. Let's stand. Bring our tithes and offering unto the Lord. And we'll just give as the Lord lays it upon your heart. Shake hands with somebody around about you or elbow bump them. Give them a smile, a high five. If they don't do any of that, just give them a little slap in the back of the head maybe. I want to see if they're listening or not, Brother Jones. I don't know if they're listening. All right, bring your tithes and offering tonight. Give unto the Lord as God lays it upon your heart. Amen. I'm going to be gone in the twinkling of an eye. How many is looking forward to that day when the Lord comes back, calls his children away? I'm going to be gone. Hallelujah. In the twinkling of an eye. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For those that were asking, Brother Jones, you might share it with them next door. 11, 11 to 2 was the coat drive last year, and that's when we'll do it again this year. Same.
Oh, yeah. What time the rapture? No man knows the day nor the hour. Isn't that what it says? Hallelujah. Coat drive, 11 to 2, September the 19th. All right. How many's enjoyed this beautiful, warm summer day? Been beautiful, hadn't it? Sister Kim said the other night, said, it's hot. And I said, we've complained long enough to get it hot. Let's let it be hot for a few days. All right. It'll be fall before we know it, and then we'll be griping because it's cold. I already noticed the other night, just by a little bit, but Brother Kramer, I already noticed the days was already getting a little shorter. I know after it hits June the 21st, the days start getting a little short. You don't notice it, but last night or the other night, I was sitting in the living room and I looked out and it was about 9.30 and it was already getting pretty dark outside. And I thought, my, it just seemed like we were building to that, that 9.45 daylight time and now we're already back to about 9.30 and it won't be long. It'll be 5.30 and it'll be dark outside, Brother Jerry. <laughs> And uh, we'll get up and it'll be dark and we'll go to bed or get off work and it'll be dark. And, but I'm thankful for these beautiful summer days that we have. I know they're a little warm, they're a little hot, but uh, I tell you, I'm glad that I'm glad to live where there's climate, where we see the seasons change, I guess what I'm trying to say. I love fall. I love all the things we talked about that the other day. And that's not what the Bible lesson is about tonight. The Bible lesson is something that we have heard our parents say, and then we became parents, and we've said it to our children, and uh, I probably had my mother tell me this even after I was an adult. You got that slide back there, Marissa? Don't act like a heathen. Now, don't act like your mother's never told you that, or you've never said that. Some Stop acting like a heathen. You better not act like a heathen. If you could see that picture up real close, Brother Jeff, he's got one car hanging out of his pocket. He's got another car in his hand. And in the vending machine or in that, wherever that is, it's supposed to be, that little, there's another car hanging on the shelf and it says something about being new, the new edition. And he's screaming because he wants the latest and the greatest and he can't, the one that's dripping out of his pocket, there's one on the floor, there's one in his pocket, one in his hand, but that's not enough. So the slide, the slide says, don't act like a heathen. Church, we better not act like heathens. We're going to talk about what happens to the heathen tonight. Don't act like a heathen. Go with me to Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter, or I'm sorry, the 6th chapter and the 13th verse. Deuteronomy, chapter number 6. Verse number 13, that heathenistic attitude does not come from God. We all know that, don't we? That's not how we are to act. We're not to do the things that the world does. We're not to act like the world. I've come out of the world, haven't you? Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. We have to come out of that kind of attitude. We know that it is in the world. This, this, this reaction, you know what that is? That's human nature. You know that? You don't get what you want? That's human nature. You throw a fit. If you're mean enough, you kick somebody in the shins. You cry. You throw yourself in the floor. That's human nature. That's what, what does a baby do? When a baby wants something, what do they do? They don't lay there and say, well, the mother, the mother will read my mind here in a moment and change my diaper. No, that's not what they do. They throw a fit until somebody either feeds them, changes them, burps them, gives them something to play with all the time. You know, the saying, Brother Clark, is it's not who wears the pants in the family. It's who wears the diapers in the family that tells you, because they tell you when you get to sleep, when you get, have to get up, when you can go somewhere, when you can't go somewhere. My sister has no children. Kim and I, Lord bless us with three. I remember the time she, she would call us and here she's this single young lady at the time and she's still single. She's just not young anymore. <laughs> she's at work. She's not watching. Mom and dad probably is, so now I'm in trouble anyway. <laughs> she 
would tell us, oh, just come on, bring the kids. It just, just, we're going to go do something. Just, well, that sounds good. That sounds easy, doesn't it? Until you got to pack the pack and play and the sippy cups and the pacifier. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Sister Lee, we better not leave the pacifier if Brittany was anywhere around. We left, well, she was a baby. We left the pacifier. We left Greenfield. We didn't even really live in Greenfield, technically. We lived in Philadelphia area, Sugar Creek, next door, door to the old fire station over there that just closed. We lived in that trailer court. We left there. We drove to Muncie to a youth rally. She cried from, from Greenfield all the way to Newcastle until we finally stopped at a store in Newcastle and went in and bought more pacifiers because we had left the house and had no binky anywhere with us. From that point on, my cousin that was going around with us a lot at that time, some of you remember James, he would, we'd leave the house and before we would walk out the door, he'd look at Kim or I and say, you got the binky, right? Yeah, we got the binky because she was going to throw a fit if she didn't have it. Matter of fact, Sister Blanche, we asked her when she was going to quit taking the pacifier. She said, when I turned three. So the night she turned three, we didn't give her the pacifier. I didn't think we were ever going to sleep again. She took her baby doll, shook her baby doll, told us we did not love her, and threw her baby doll across the room. Oh, yes, she did. Didn't she, Kim? You can see the pictures of her third birthday party. We had a birthday party the next day, and she had not slept hardly all night. It is something to see a three-year-old with bags under her eyes from not sleeping hardly all night. Mom and dad didn't get much sleep either. That's human nature right there. But church, we've been called away from human nature. The Bible says that that is the enemy of God, that the flesh is the enemy of God, but we are now a new creature created in the spirit. Isn't that right? So go with me, as I said, to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Let's jump down to verse 13. It says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of of the earth. Look at what's happening here. He's warning them, don't you go after other gods. We know that one of the biggest problems that Israel had in that day where they were constantly being entangled with the gods of the people of the land that they were going through. Wherever it was that they went, it seemed like they would walk in victorious, and if they were there for very long, they began to get intermingled and intertwined, intermarried, if you will, and connected to the people uh, of that land. And by doing that, they begin to take on their their attributes and they begin to take on their worship and their praise and and they would worship their gods come on church that's not the way we're supposed to be we're not supposed to be that way we're not supposed to act that way we're not supposed to conduct ourselves that way that's why the bible tells us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers because if we're not careful their gods become our gods and their ways become our ways and here he is warning them once again stay away from those relationships and if you begin to worship another god then god's anger is going to be kindled against you i don't know about you but i don't want god's anger kindled against me I've taken enough spankings in my life from mom and dad and from God. And I would much rather take a whipping from mom or dad than from God. And I can't imagine tonight if his anger was kindled against me because I had turned away from him. I'm telling you. Sister Angie, I keep going back to the conversation we had a week ago tonight. I, I don't, I'm like you, the ones that know and they've walked away. They need to get back. And the ones that don't know, you need to come to the Lord because I'm going to tell you something. As I told somebody the other night standing in the back of the church, this is the greatest life there is under heaven. Brother Brown used to say that all the time. Even if there was no heaven or hell, still, this is the greatest life that there is in the world. Hands down. Don't let the devil tell you any other thing or any different. That's the truth tonight. I'm not trying to... Did you wake up this morning 
with a raging headache? Did you have to go out and look at your car to make sure you didn't run into something? Are you hooked on dope tonight? Are you hooked on alcohol tonight? Is your wife run off with somebody? No, this is the greatest life that there is under heaven. Don't get entangled with the things of the world. You've been brought out of that. Don't go back to being that. It says, ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. He said, don't tempt God as you did in Massa. In that location, they begin to murmur and they begin to complain. We don't have anything to drink. And it was there where God told Moses the first time to smite the rock. He said, don't tempt God. They, they begin to say, is God really even with us? Church, I'm going to tell you something. God is not only with us, but he is for us tonight. He said, don't tempt God. Don't bicker. Don't murmur don't complain against the things of God oh church we can say that sometimes but let us start going through it and we turn into uh, what the children of Israel were we'll start to murmur and we'll start to complain woe is me woe is me had a bad day stubbed my toe broke my little fingernail whatever the problem is and we let it get us down sometimes to the point that we can't even see what God has brought us through what God has brought us not only through, but what he has kept us from. Church, we don't know what God kept you from this day. Verse 18 says, And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies, from before thee as the Lord hath spoken. Look at what he's saying. You're going, to, you're going to have to come out from among the world. You're going to have to not act like the people of the world so that you might be worthy of the land that has been promised unto you. He said, God is going to go before you, Brother Jerry, and he said, he's going to cast out your enemies, but that's only if you don't act like that. If you don't go back to where I've brought you from, if you, if you revert back to being that, then my anger is going to be kindled against you but as long as you follow after the commandments and the statutes of God as long as you walk in his pathway as long as you put on what God is desired to make us from the beginning what he desired for us to be here it says once we put that on that not only will we be able to possess the land how many is looking for a land that God has promised us I am and it says here I'll go before you and cast out your enemies well, Brother Reese, I just can't overcome this. You better give it to the Lord because there's nothing that God can't overcome. The thing that can't overcome it is our flesh. Come on now. I said the thing that can't overcome it is us. My God overcomes everything. My God's able to defeat every enemy. The victory's already been won. We'll show you that here in a moment. The victory has already been won. Verse 20, and when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? And thou shalt say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore upon Egypt upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes and he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Look at what he's saying here. Pass this to the next generation. Make sure they understand it. Make sure they know it. 
Why do we do this? He says, tell your son. And let me say, tell your daughters. Tell your children. Live the life in front of them. You may not always have to give them a testimony. But there's times, give them a testimony. Tell them what God has brought you through. What God, where God has brought your family. Anybody, anybody know much about your family history? Don't you love knowing about your family history? Sister Clark was going through her grandfather's closet here a few couple of years ago. And she come across some newspapers. My goodness, the headlines that she showed me. Grandma's closet. And what, one of the headlines was from, was it from D-Day or V-E Day? I think it was from V-J Day. One of the days that the war had ended, either a victory in Europe, victory in Japan. But it was from the end of World War II. They had that, not, not a copy. This is an original newspaper that was sitting in her grandmother's closet. And from the picture I saw of it, it was in very good condition. Something that's been in their family now for 70 some odd years. What would that be? 74 years ago, the end of the war, took the war happened. I wasn't born 74 years ago. Some of you were, a lot of us were not. 74 years ago, but here's the history. I love the history of my family. There was a night my father and I, Sister Mary, we set up till about four o'clock in the morning. And all he did was tell me one story about my family after another, things that I had never known. My great, great grandfather that came to America, his son, John Joseph, who I'm named after, his son, Ivan Noah, uh, that was a barber and, a, and a, the one that him and his father got into the gasoline business that my grandfather, my great grandfather, uh, Joe, gra Grandpa Joe, he was the first, had the first Phillips 66 station in the whole state of Indiana. Started at Sister Lee. They came to him. He was working for a fella. And he was, the guy had, he was, his big thing was tires and batteries, but he had gas pumps. And this guy got to coming in and he got to hanging out, Brother McRoberts, and watching, probably buying a soda or whatever they had at that time. And he got kind of hanging out and watching what was happening in this guy's place. And he said to my grandfather, my great-grandfather, he said, Joe, he said, um, people come in here because they like you. He said, uh, Grandpa was selling the gas. The other gentleman was handling the tires and the batteries mostly. He said, but people are coming in here because they like you. He said, we're getting ready to start a new service station in Indiana called Phillips 66. Never had heard of it. Didn't have any in Indiana at that time. He said, we think you're the guy to run it. My grandfather said, I don't have nothing. He said, I don't have any kind of money to start a business. They said, don't worry about that. You show up such and such date. We'll get you set up. Said, sure enough, they broke ground on the building. He thought the guy was crazy. He's, no, no way somebody walks in and just starts talking to you about starting a business and don't know anything about you other than watching you for a few days. Sure enough, they broke ground on the building. He kept coming in and we're getting ready to open. We're going to open. Are you ready? And he kept telling him, I don't have money. He said, I don't have money for a first load of gas or tires or nothing. The guy said, don't worry about that. We'll set you up. The first, when you're able to pay us back, you'll pay it back, and that's the way we'll go. Sure enough, the building was built. They had a grand opening day. They handed Grandpa the keys to the building and $10 in change, and that's how they started the service station business. And it went that way for almost 50 years that my family runs it. To sit and listen to my dad and to hear those accounts and to know before that, Brother Jerry, they were blacksmiths. So they were always, I guess, in transportation. I don't know. But they, they were and just the things that he told me about my family. Now, my mom's family, they're Kentuckian. So we only go back a couple of generations and it's all mixed up. I don't know where they all came from. I'm in trouble again. Yeah, that's right. They came from Morgantown. Came from Butler County. Got all mixed up down there. I got one. Well, I'll leave that story alone. <laughs> but I love knowing where I come from. I love hearing because, you see, I want to be able to pass that down to my children. I want them to know. And, and you can ask them. I never tell them the same story twice. <laughs> Kayla's giving me a look back there. Rebuttal, is that what that is? But see, now they can tell those stories. Now they have heard, they've heard me tell that story about Grandpa Joe more than one time in their life. And I want them to be able to hand it down to their children. To say, hey, your great, great, great grandfather. 
And however long the Lord tarries, I want those things to go on. I want them to know where they came from. I want them to know that they had a heritage. They had a background. Church, that's what Moses is telling them here. You need to tell your children what brought us out. God brought us out. It wasn't Moses that brought us out. It was God that led us out. Pharaoh had us as bondmen, but God set us free. Didn't just set us free, but we went out with a high hand. They went out. They said they were giving them things to just leave the, leave the country. Just, just go. They were trying to hold them at one point. Well, we'll let you go, but you got to leave the elders here. You got to leave your cattle here. You got to do this and you got to do that. Finally, the Lord just kept telling Moses, no, they're all going to go. When you go, they're all going to go. And you're going to leave with a high hand. You're going to leave with favor. I'm going to tell you something tonight, church. The world may not realize it, but we're going to leave this place in favor. I said, we're going to leave this place in favor. Hallelujah. In the favor of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And our children need to realize it and need to know it. Something keeps being impressed upon me the last couple of weeks. We cannot lose this generation. We look around and we see people today and it seems like people are backing away. But I'm going to tell you something. There are still hungry people that desire to know more and more about God. I don't want to see a generation fall because we don't tell them what Jesus did for us. Don't lose your testimony tonight, church. Don't let the devil take your testimony away. You may not stand behind a pulpit and preach, but I'm telling you something, you preach with the life that you live. Preach it. Preach it. Let them see it. Let them know it. Don't go home and close the door so they don't hear you praying for them. Open the door and call out their name in prayer and let them know that my mom and dad pray for me. If they're not too cool, get down next to them beside their bed and pray with them still. We used to do it. How come we did those things as kids? It seemed like we get older and now we're too cool. Come on, church. Let's continue to raise this next generation. If it wasn't for those that went before me, those that had told me what had happened in the house of God, if it wasn't for being at those fellowship meetings and those youth rallies and seeing and hearing the messages, where would I be tonight? Where would you be tonight? If it wasn't for those that had went before us, now it's our turn. Now we are the ones standing here and we have got to carry on. Isn't that what the word's telling us? Go with me now to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. See, you'll see where this heathenistic spirit comes from. What makes this little boy such a brat? It's a horrible word, isn't it? But it is very decisive. You know if somebody says, he's a brat, you know exactly what they're saying. I could say it like that comedian said it, but I'll leave that alone. <laughs> oh. Isaiah 14, verse number 12. We're going to read down through verse 23, so read with me. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How many knows who the morning star is? Jesus. Look at what he calls Lucifer here, son of the morning. Oh, Lucifer had, he had plans, did he not? He thought he was it. He thought he was the living in. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people who think they're all that in a bag of chips, and they need to realize that it's God and God alone that gives them the ability and the talent and the anointing. There are people that think that their preaching is in them, that their singing is in them, and they will elevate themselves and push God down to the point you'll see them then out into the world doing the things that they once did in a pulpit or on a platform for God. Now they're doing it out. In, you know how many rock and roll singers, blues singers, jazz musicians, and and all those people started out in the church a great many of them. You know, there's people that once were preachers that now are comedians and actors and there's actors that want to be preachers, but yet the lucrative lifestyle that they live won't allow them to be a preacher. I'm going to tell you something. You better obey, obey God and not your pocketbook. Oh my. Oh my. You better obey God and not your fame, what people think of you. Well, you know, 
You know how many times the devil's come to me and said, Joe, you know you could really grow that church if you would just ease up a little bit. If you would just let them do this and let them do that and let them dress this way and not that I make you, but you know what I'm saying. Preach a little bit different. Don't preach that it's a sin. I'll put it that way. Don't preach this and don't preach that and don't say this and don't do that. You know what I have to tell the devil? Get thee behind me, Satan. What good would it do me? The Bible says, what good does it do a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Not only lose my soul, but then, Brother Kramer, I've got all this blood on my hands for preaching a lie to the people and causing them to be damned. That's the word. Look, this is where this comes from tonight. Well, I feel and I believe. That's the problem. It's not about I or me or you. It's about what does the word of God say? He says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Look at what he's saying. He's going to elevate himself above God. He's going to make himself a God, if you will. I want you to know something he has in the world. He has elevated himself to a godlike status in the world, Brother Caleb, because that's who the world worships. And look at what we're going to say here. He says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Look, the, the devil... Everybody's afraid of the devil. But I'm going to tell you something. God's got control of what Lucifer does. He's already cast him out. We just read it. He's already thrown him out. When the, we, we've been talking about it. It was mentioned during the Bible study revival that when the demon possessed would come to Jesus, they would say, why comest thou to persecute us before our time? We know who you are. They knew who he was. You know why? Because it wasn't God the Father that threw them out. It was Jesus, God himself, that had thrown them out of heaven. I'm telling you, I believe his name was always Jesus. I believe it was only declared when he was born upon this earth to a virgin by the name of Mary. I believe his name has always been Jesus. Hallelujah. It says here, it says in verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Now look at what it's saying here. These are now, I believe he's talking about the followers, those that have walked away from the things of God, those world leaders. As I begin to read this, I begin to think about what's going on in the world today, our world leaders and, and what the destruction that is happening, the destruction that happened, yes, in the Bible time. But guess what? We're living right now. And I believe this is a living word, Brother Leite. And if it was breathed into the men and women of that day, God is still breathing it into our life today. He said they made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. Huh. That opened not the house of, the, of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as a raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass, trodden under, foot, under feet. Look at what it's saying to those that follow after Lucifer, that one that had tried to set himself up, that one has, that has set himself up as the king, the prince of darkness, and the, and the king of this world, if you will, the one that this world worships, this one that they turn to. They run away from God, a God that loved them, a God that, uh, that still loves them, but loved them enough to die on a cross and raise again that still reaches for them, even in our pitiful state, even, like I say, when he loves us when we're unlovable and he still loves them but yet they run and believe a lie that lucifer continues to tell he told it then i'm going to elevate myself into being something that i he knew he could never be and he's still lying to people today and sister honeycutt they're still following him in lockstep 
and they're going to follow him all the way to the pits of hell and the lake of fire. He said, Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renewed. Listen to what this is saying. Come on, don't be a heathen. We'll get to that in a moment. Prepare slaughter for his children. Prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittering and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. I looked that word besom up because I wasn't sure what it meant. He said, I'm going to sweep it with a broom of destruction. I'm going to sweep them away. Church, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be swept away from God. I don't want to be swept away and, and be forgotten and be left behind. I'm going to tell you something, church, there's coming a day where he's going to say, cast them into outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And I don't want to be swept into that outer darkness. I don't want to have followed Lucifer as he is cast down. And now those that follow him are cast down. Look at what it said there. I, I paused for a moment and I wanted to go on. It said that, that our children, what did it say here? Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. Church, we're going to teach our children one way or the other. You wouldn't, the people in here under the sound of my voice, you wouldn't kill your children for anything. Oh, there's probably been times you've thought about some things. But you really wouldn't do it for nothing. Matter of fact, Quite the opposite. You would give your life for your children. And wouldn't think twice about it. But church, how many parents are leading their kids to slaughter by the life that they live? Kids wake up in homes. <laughs> Kayla knew a young lady. Lived in a big fancy house. Mom drove a luxury vehicle. German made. I'll just put it that way. You can guess which one. Lived in a big home. Had a name in town. Kayla went to her house one time with a bunch of girls that she went to school with. Her daughter told her, said, we're not allowed to go out on that porch over there. That's mom's porch. Kayla said it was full of alcohol, beverages, empty cans, bottles, ashtrays full of cigarettes or whatever. And that young lady and her brother would wake up, Sister Gwen, some days and wouldn't even know where their mom was at. She would be in another state sometimes and they had no idea they'd wake up and mom would be completely gone somewhere else. Children waking up and there's strange people asleep in their house laying all over the living room from mom and dad's party from the night before. Kids that have went to school, there was a little boy that got in trouble. Of course, the family was the one that really got in trouble. He went to school. It was show and tell day. He was a little guy. And he brought a 357 Magnum with him to school because he had found it laying under the chair at mom and dad's house because they had had a party the night before and he had found somebody's gun laying under... Come on, church, what, what kind of life are we living, our, are we leading our kids in? Well, I don't do that, Brother Riggs. You better be careful. You better be careful what they're watching. I don't have to say TV. You can get as much stuff on the Internet. You can get worse on the Internet than you'll ever get on regular TV. Sorry. And we carry, we carry, a, we carry a visual device with us everywhere we go. Kim was trying to describe something to me today. Her birthday's coming up, so she wanted to tell me what she wanted for her birthday. And she was trying to describe it to me. She said, oh, you'll just have to take the girls with you. I said, you know, you can look it up on your phone and send me a picture of it. And that's what she did. 
We carry these things around with us all the time. Do you know who your kids are talking to? Do you know what they're really doing? Do you know what music they're listening to? Oh, I'm, I'm way off of it now. No, I'm not. Because we need to make sure that we are, we are teaching our children what is right. That we're instructing them in a way. Well, Brother Riggs, I did this and I did. I'm going to tell you something right now. None of us were perfect. And they're not going to be perfect. I pray they're not heathens. They're not going to be perfect because they're striving. We weren't perfect. We went through our step. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not sure they have the time. I know they don't have the time that we have because it's been this many years later. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how much time we have left. And we better make sure that. And how many of them that did? Sister Angie, that didn't come back. How many of them couldn't come back because they're laying in a graveyard somewhere? That's just the facts, folks. They're in a jailhouse tonight, wishing they could be in the house of the Lord. Their mind is blown out, and they're up in the psych ward in the hospital because they blew their mind out on dope or whatever it was, and they wish they could get back to the things of God. Come on now. Let's quit talking about the kids a minute. This is adult class. How many elders, Brother Paul, are sitting over in the nursing home tonight that wishes they could be in the house of the Lord that could have all of those years? I've heard people say, I don't know why I didn't come back sooner. And I'll never get that time back that I wasted. And you won't. Don't waste another day. Don't waste another moment. Don't waste another service. Can I just tell you, I'll just be honest with you tonight. There's some people that have come by over the years, and I've told some of you individually, but there's some times people will come by and they've wanted to come back and preach. We don't have time to waste a service. We don't have time for just a good fire camp story, campfire story, and to hear, we need the Word of God preached to us. This ain't a church that wants to have our ears tickled. And we're not a church that is all about theatrics and all about... We just want the Word of God preached into our life. Isn't that right? So that we can be... I want to be saved. I don't want to be entertained. I want to be saved. I can get entertainment a lot of places. But I can't have somebody preach to me the Word of God just anywhere. I want to be saved. Genesis, the 11th chapter. We read the account of some people. They thought they would do what Lucifer tried to do. Say, well, Brother Riggs, nobody, nobody would try to elevate themselves. Oh, there's a lot of people that try to elevate themselves over God. You know how many people that don't even believe in God? They try to elevate themselves and make themselves a God. People have followed him into the wilderness. The Bible talks about it. Jesus said, don't follow him into the desert. I'm not there. He told them that then. There's people today that will follow people onto these communes that one group thought they would catch the hell bop comet and they all killed themselves and all, all kinds of things that have happened where people have set themselves up. And here it talks about what happened at Babel. It says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make a name. Look at what they said here. It wasn't just that they wanted to reach heaven. They wanted to make a name for themselves. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the, Lord of, uh, the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence 
upon the face of the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These people said, let us make a name for ourselves, and let us build a tower to heaven and let's see where this God is. I want you to know something tonight, church. I'm glad I know where he is. And it's not about my name. It's about his name. And here it says that as they begin to speak one to another, that the Lord said that they're all of one language. They're all of one speech. And it says, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. I'm going to tell you something, church. I'm, I'm, I'm not against all the social media things. I think, you know, we, we use it for good or we use it for evil. It's like a lot of things. I'm going to tell you something. When I can hit a button and I can talk to people all around the world, we come pretty close to speaking one language, don't we? We can figure it out with one another, can't we? There's a lot of people today that are trying to do all kinds of wicked. They're imagining all kinds of things. Can I just be blunt? Let me be blunt here for a moment, the adult class. Especially you sisters that have daughters and you brothers that have daughters. Be careful with your children. Be careful how you dress them. Because there's a lot of wicked people in this world. And the more you hear about this sex trafficking thing that's going on, people all around the world buying and selling little girls. All around the world. And boys, yes, and boys. That's true. Be careful. I'll tell you, there's times as an adult, I don't feel comfortable being by myself if I don't have some friends with me. I'll just be honest. Because you don't know what's going to happen. I went for a walk today, walked through Greenfield. I didn't have, I had my phone with me, and that's all I had. I didn't have a wallet. I didn't have nothing on me. If something happened, they would have killed me for nothing because I didn't have a penny to my name. No ID, no nothing. Had my phone, and that was it. You know, I got to stay connected. <laughs> Be careful, church. Be careful. I don't know how much you pay attention to these things, but I'm telling you, it's out there. It's out there. And these people are speaking to one another all over the world. I got a little 14-year-old blonde girl from Newcastle, Indiana, and she could be in Japan. She could be on her way to Japan before Travis and Angie even knows where Sarah or Ashton even's at. Kayla used to work at Starbucks here in Greenfield. She'd go in at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. That Starbucks is right next to the interstate. I would tell her, Sister Gwen, when you get there, text us, let us know. She's 20 years old at that time. I said, text us and let us know that you got there. Because I said, do you know where you could be by the time I get up and your manager would call me and say, hey, Kayla never showed up for work. I said, you're next to the interstate. From that interstate, you can be in all kinds of places in just a couple of hours. Have no idea, church, what's going on. If you don't pay attention, what's going on in this world? And I'm telling you something. They're watching. They're watching. I told you, I stood in the store one day. I was talking to a parent and their daughter was standing there. And I watched this young man walk by her that was quite a bit older than her. And the parent was facing me, so they couldn't see it. And when they walked by, he turned all the way around and looked that girl up and down. They're watching. You better be careful. I don't know why I'm saying this. This I have never, not even crossed my mind. But somebody needs to know it tonight, either in the building or outside the building. Be cautious because the things of this world will kill us if we're not careful. Mm. My, my. Go to Numbers, the 16th chapter. The 20th verse. He 
you want to read above that, you can. Korah and his men have come and they have declared that Moses has taken on too much responsibility, that he is not the only one that can speak for God, and that they are just as, their place should be just as right, they should have a rightful place just as much as Moses in leading the people. And verse 20 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among the congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. The Lord's ready to kill all of them, but Moses and Aaron. And it says, And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with the, all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from, a, from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. We just talked a moment ago about where are you leading your children to? And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die, the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking, all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their gods. They and all that appertained to him went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all of Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. Look at what has happened here. It says, Korah and those men, they came against Moses. They were against the man of God, the one that was speaking as the oracle of God. Said, You have taken on too much. You say that you are the only one. I want you to know something. It was God that came down and spoke to Moses. It was God that visited Moses in the cloud, that spoke to him as a friend. These men were just about setting themselves up. They were having a little temper tantrum. They were beginning to act like that heathen little child up there. They would get, begin to say, we want some power. We want a title. We want some authority. Church, I don't know what you want tonight, but I want what God wants for me. Moses said, all right. Lord was going to slay them all. They began to cry out. The Lord said, tell them to separate themselves. Church, we're going to have to make a choice. We're either going to really serve God or we're really going to serve the world. There's no halfway. There's no in-between. There's no straddling the fence. You're either going to follow God or you're not. There's heaven and there's hell. Choose you this day whom you shall serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Kim has to answer that for herself too. We live in the same building, but this is my house. As for me and my house, they begin to cry out. Moses said, the Lord told him, he said, tell them to separate themselves. So they did. But Dothan, Abraham, and, and uh, Korah and their families stood there. Said they stood and they watched with their children, Sister Kimmy. We just talked about it. Where are you leading your children to? He said, if they die a common death, then God's really not speaking through me. But if the earth is to open up and swallow them, then you'll know who God is speaking through. 
He didn't any more get it out of his mouth, Sister Blanche, and I believe the earth opened up and it swallowed those wicked, wicked people. It said the fire fell down and consumed the 250 that had burnt incense, that was kind of their little priest, if you will, that had elevated themselves into a position that they didn't belong in. The fire came down and consumed those 250 men. And they all ran and they began to cry out, Oh, church, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. How many people have been crying out since March? Oh, woe is me. We need to get back to God. We need to get back to church. And now the church is open. They said, Oh, he's going to swallow all of us. They all ran. Isn't that what it says? Look down through there. It wasn't very long. They began to murmur and complain again. They just saw the earth open up. They just saw the fire come down and consume 250 of their brethren. And now they're murmuring and complaining once again. Jump down to verse number 41. And it says, But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of the Lord. They begin to murmur. And they begin to complain once again. So jump down to verse 48. And it says, And stood, and he stood, Moses and Aaron, and he stood between the dead and the living. Aaron went in and began to, Moses began to cry out to God because now a plague began to fall upon the people. Moses said, Go in and burn incense. And it says, And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 besides them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. I'm going to tell you something. People People have a heathenistic attitude. They have a heathenistic spirit about them. And it is born within our human nature. And here, after just a few moments, it, the next day, they saw where they could murmur and complain against the things of God once again. And even though they had seen what had just taken place, they still complained about God. So God sent a plague among them now, and over 14,000 died. Moses said, Aaron, go burn incense and stand between. It said he stood between the living and the dead. And God stopped the plague. Aaron come back to the temple of God, to the tabernacle, and Moses was standing there in the doorway. I'm going to tell you something, church. As we read a few moments ago, the anger of God is going to be kindled against the heathens of the world. He's coming back. He's coming back, folks. He's a loving God. I told you the other day, that's true. He loved us so much that he didn't have to leave heaven and die, but he did. He could have wiped it all out during the flood, Brother Caleb, and said, I've had enough of this people. Now I'm not going to deal with them any longer, and I'll create a new group of people. He could have not only rained down fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah and all the cities of the plain of Shinar. He could have rained it down upon all the earth and said, I'll form me another group of people. It ain't been that long since the flood. If I have to do it, I'll do it again. He could have done it over and over. But you see, he loves us that much. And his desire is for us to have a relationship with him. Can I ask you again, how much do you love him tonight? That's the question. We know God loves us. How much do we love Him? Do we love Him enough to come out of the ways of the world and be a true child of God? To see a child throw a temper tantrum, it looks so silly, doesn't it? They hold their breath. Brittany used to get mad. Boy, she's probably mad at me for picking on her tonight. I'm not picking on her. It's just our truth. I'm talking about our kids. you got stories about your kids. She'd get mad. She didn't have any sisters at that time. So she'd get mad and she'd pull her own hair. She'd say, ah! You're like, go ahead. You're not hurting anybody but yourself. And it looked kind of silly. And we laugh about it now. You know what? It looks even stupider? See an adult throw a temper tantrum. Oh, nobody ever does that. <laughs> oh. 
A preacher would never, <laughs> okay, all right. Holy Ghost filled singers wouldn't act, okay. Oh my, I could tell you some stories, but we won't. See somebody throw a temper tantrum, Brother Clark, because they didn't get to play the drums that night. I just won't come back. Well, if you have that spirit, you shouldn't have been up there playing to begin with. Last place, Psalm, the second chapter. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Look at what that's saying. Look at what that just said. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Who is he talking about? The anointed. The people of this world are saying, we're not going to let the anointed of God be bound to us. We're going to break their bands and cast their, their cords from us. We don't need God. Uh-oh. We don't need God to be our leader. We are the leaders. Oh, you better be careful. You better be careful. We just read in Isaiah what happened to the leaders that didn't follow after God, that followed after Lucifer. They were cast down, said they weren't even buried, allowed to be buried with their own family, but they were cast out like a, like a stick that had just been discarded. They were just, they were just lay, waylaid, if you will, by the things of the world. But church, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to be waylaid by the things of sin. I want to live for God to the fullest extent. They said, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. We don't, we don't need to be associated with them. We don't need God. I'm not going to get political on you, but you know there's one political party in this, in this country, this country, we don't have to look to a communist country, that doesn't want God as part of their political platform any longer. Won't mention God in their politics. What did this say? Let, why doth the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Let the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in der, 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 I can never say that word. Derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Church, God is in control. We can make all the plans that we want to make, and we can, we can wring our hands over who our mayor and our governor is and all those things, but you know God is in control of all of it anyway. And you know, it might just be the next one that gets in the White House might be there just for the ushering in of the coming of the Lord. If we get to November. Do your part. I'm not telling you not to do your part. But don't let that ruin your walk with God. Well, I prayed and this one I wanted didn't get. No, you better just pray that God's will be done. Because here it says he sits on high and laughs at all of that. It says, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. What did we read a while ago, Brother Kramer? He said that he would go out and he would defeat our enemies. If we would follow him, that he has, a, he has a heavenly land for us. He has a land that he has promised unto us. And he told them, if you will follow after me, I'll give you the land which I have promised unto your fathers, and I will defeat the enemies that are before you. What did he just say? Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, 
Blessed are they that put their trust in Him. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people today that are against God. It says here, kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and ye perish from the way when His wrath is kindled but a little. We better make sure that everything that we do is for God. I can't help what the country does. I can't help what this state does. I can't help what this city does. I can't help what this neighborhood does. But I can help what Joe Riggs does. I have to love God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love Him with everything that you've got. Woe unto the nation that turns their back on Israel. Turns their back upon God. Here he says, but blessed are they that put their trust in him. Tonight, church, we don't have to act like that. We better not act like that. We better realize we have been called out of that. The brother said the other night, we've been called out of darkness. That's what Brother Brown's favorite scripture said, isn't it? Called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Church, I'm glad I've been called into the light of God. I'm glad I don't have to be like that. Don't be a heathen tonight. Don't act like a heathen. I've heard my mom say, stop acting like a heathen. Bunch of wild banshees in there. Come on. When God tells us to stop acting like a heathen, he's telling us that if, we, if we're a heathen, we're going to be lost. If we're a heathen, we're not of God. And if we're not of God, then what spirit are we of? See, Brother Amos, the people don't realize in the world today that the music that we listen to, how many believe that Christian music is inspired by God? I do. I believe that a good Christian song, I'm talking about a good Holy Ghost filled Christian song. I believe that's inspired by God. But if they're not singing about God and they're singing about something else, I believe it's inspired by somebody else. So we better be careful what we're putting in us tonight. If I had poison up here, you wouldn't put that in you for nothing. If I said, I got arsenic up here, who wants a taste? You wouldn't come up and get it. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of the things we put in our bodies, in our spiritual bodies, is just as deadly. And going to kill us even quicker. Church, I believe God's getting ready to come back. I believe God is trying to get our attention. And I believe we better be doing everything that we can to make heaven our home. And if he doesn't come for another hundred years, it's still the greatest life that there is. And I still wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing, Sister Blanche. I still would live for him like I am right now. Because I just, I love serving God. I love, I love coming together with God's people. I love being with the people that love God. Come on, church, let's continue the loving tonight. And let's act, let's act like a child of God tonight. Let's all stand. Please watch your children. Please pay attention to what they say and what they're doing. Please pay attention to what they're listening to. There's some dangerous stuff out there. And if you ask them what they're listening to and you see them changing the Spotify or the whatever they got on their phone, there's probably a reason why. Watch who they're hanging around with. Watch what they're being affected by. Are they affecting the kids they go to school with or are their kids, their friends at school affecting them? Because I know they're going to have people. I had kids in school. You did too. And I had a lot of friends that were in church that aren't in church any longer because they were affected by the things of this world. Church, let's make sure we're making a difference. Make sure you're on fire with the Holy Ghost. And let's make a difference in this world. Do you love the Lord tonight? I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Kim, dismiss us in a word of prayer.
Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Amen and amen. Shake hands and be friendly. Go out and be the church. Praise the Lord. Chris Kraft. Thank you.